Okay, so just quickly before we get started on the first lesson, a little bit of housekeeping. At the end of each lesson, you will get asked to do some worked examples. I try and keep those examples to a minimum so that you don't get too bored going through them, um, but there is a progression to them. Now, when you're doing answers in maths, make sure you write down all of your working, everything you do. It helps if you make a mistake, you can then go back and see exactly where that mistake is made as you go through the working. As you'll see when I go through questions on the board, I write down everything I do, I write down every piece of working. And you'll see in the work solutions, there's every single piece of work that I do done. Sometimes you can make little shortcuts, but try and write down all the steps that you're doing. In the exam, it becomes especially helpful because the examiner can see exactly what you've done to get to that answer. And even if you somehow make a mistake going through it and type a button wrong into your calculator, you'll still get a lot of the marks for the working being correct even though your final answer might not be. And it also helps at the end of an exam when you go back through, you can check, see exactly where you've gone wrong, what you might have done wrong. So really please make sure you're writing down all that working. Okay, so now we'll just get on with the first lesson, which is negative numbers. Now obviously a lot of people might find this very simple, but there are a few little tricks that I use because sometimes they can be a little bit tricky. So what I do with negative numbers is when I'm adding or taking them away, I use this thing called a number line. What's a number line? It's literally just write the numbers down. So one, two, three, four, five, in that direction. And obviously we've got our negative numbers, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. Now you can write this number line as long in either direction as you want. Now why does this help when we're adding and taking away? It helps, because if we're adding, we know we're moving in this direction to the right. We're moving in the positive direction. Okay, and if we're taking away, we know we're moving in the negative direction. The, we're getting more negative, so to the left. So how does this help us? Let's have a look at an example. So if we've got, say, three, take away seven, okay, we know we're taking away, so we're moving in the negative direction. So we just go from three, and we move seven places. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we end up at minus four. Okay, what about if we've got minus two, add three? What does that give us? Well, what does that give us? It gives us, we start minus two, we go one, two, three. So we know that, that will equal one. So that's how we use our number line. What if we go off the end of the number line? So what if we've got something like minus 1, minus 12? What's that going to equal? Well, we're going to go off the end of the number line, aren't we? But we know we're just going to move 12 to points in this direction. So we start at minus 1 and we go 12. So what is that going to take us to? Well, now we know we're moving in this direction. we are 12 away here. It's going to take us to minus 13, isn't it? Okay, so that's how a number line can be useful. Don't be afraid to write it down in your exam in the corner if it's going to help you uh, answer these questions. There's nothing wrong with, with anything you want to write down. The paper's there for that because you're not going to get marked down for writing down little things to help you out. So another thing with negative numbers that a lot of people get confused about. <clears throat> what about if I've got five take away minus three? Okay, what do I do then? So five taking away minus three. Now, so here's five, and I'm going to take away, which means I move that, but I'm taking away minus three. So how's that going to work? Well, I'm subtracting a negative. So um, it's a negative of a negative, which gives us a positive. So let's write these down. We've got to remember these. So a minus and a minus will give us a plus. But anything else, like a minus and a plus, will give us a minus, a plus, and a minus will always give us a minus, which we can see, because we know if we've got um, five plus minus three, that actually is just five take away minus three, it just becomes take away, okay? And then obviously we've got a plus and a plus, that's going to equal a plus, so that equals a minus. Obviously, plus and a plus, we've got five plus three. We don't bother writing the, the pluses on, it's just going to 
equal x. So 5 minus minus 3 becomes, let's round it off, 5 plus 3. Now when you're adding and taking away fractions, this only is the case when you've got the minus, minuses next to each other. Minus 5 minus 3, just because the two minuses there doesn't mean you're going to get a plus answer, you're not tight. You start at minus 5 and you're going to go minus 3, so you're still going to get minus 8. But if you've got the two minuses next to each other, then you're going to get it turning into a plus. Negative or negative is a positive. Okay, and that brings us neatly on to when we're timesing <coughs> negative numbers. <coughs> if I had minus 5 times by minus 3, now the two negatives, again, we look at our little table, make a positive. So that's going to equal plus 15, which we just write as 15. We don't write the plus on. We just write it as 15. And again, if I've got minus 3 times 5, there's only one minus. So it's going to be 3 lots of, sorry, 5 lots of minus 3. It's going to give us minus 15. And again, if we're dividing, it's the same as when we're adding. So we're going to have, say, 15 divided by, minus 15 divided by minus 3. It's going to give us 5. The minuses cancel out. So, what we need to remember, when we're taking away or adding, a minus and a minus only makes a plus if the minus and the minus are next to each other. So it's only if they're next to each other that this is important. When we're timesing or dividing, it's if we've got two minuses at all, like that, they're going to give us a plus. So we're adding and subtracting next to each other, and what plan on dividing wherever they are. You need lots of us. Go and have a look at the questions. Have a go through doing these. Really simple exercises just to get you started, and then we'll move on to the next lesson.